Hello today, it is GA Quick Picks time. We've plenty to get through today. First of all, the fact that uh, two of the games are not even on TV. Controversial and a controversial week for the state broadcaster, must be said. But the scores at the moment... <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> Where, actually, you just wouldn't uh, know where you're going with a, jo with a Johnny and Joe. Was I'm, I, 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 like I'm, doing, I'm doing my job here. Sorry. So, Will has reminded me that he's a very good historical record in this, but the current scores in the GA Quick Picks are Shane who controversially is not in Crow Park tomorrow we're going to get to that as well 17 Will 15 Mick 14 even though yeah Mick did come in last last week with 3 Will had 4 Shane had 4 what happened last week? The only thing I remember is that I picked Cork when everybody else went for Roscommon did other picks happen? I can't. I'm not sure you went for Galway in the football. I went for Galway, but I went for Galway in the football and Tip in the hurling. Talk yourself out of Galway in the hurling. And I wouldn't mind, Johnny. I've been telling the world that Tip weren't all that this year. Yeah, they came up against everyone in Munster at their worst, except for Waterford. And I thought then I just didn't think they were there yet. And whatever happened, all the bullshit all the week just got to me, and I changed my mind. Never change your mind. I didn't no. love the. Galway team when it was named didn't like the look of that forward line and Conor Whelan managed to miss like about in three fairness, they only scored 118 or something like yeah. so the key to the quick picks is always trust your first instinct Stick yeah your gut. you'll kick yourself otherwise speaking of gut because Shane has a pain in saying because for some reason and we may get to that as well he's not uh, in Crow Park which will entail <laughs> that you have to watch uh, on GA Go yeah. they're not in quarter final mm -hmm. I, just yeah. not having this at all why Last ten uh, years, you would have watched Sky Sports. Be free to air. Well, that's it. But they were on Sky Sports for a long time. Like mm. of all the things that we've given out about GA Go, this is the most standard. Mm. It's probably issue. because Sky was more accessible, maybe than than GA Go is. Just for for some people, you know, you obviously have to stream it, HDMI it into your TV. Whereas a lot of people had Sky yeah. subscriptions or yeah. whatever. So I find it's it a bit just... weird it's turned into an issue this week, Johnny. Given that this was signposted <laughs> the minute the rights agreement yeah. happened last year. I'm very reactionary in general, so I'm just I am reacting. But it does seem a bit strange that we've. Kerry Tron our man on in tomorrow and without like you know lamenting the old people of Ireland that a lot of them will not be able to watch this mm. David Clifford the greatest footballer of our generation in an All-Ireland quarterfinal and you have to pay 12 quid to watch it on TV that's what you will be doing well I'll have to do that yeah tell, tell, now it, it, this could be like one of these stories like you have a season pass Shane no don't have a season pass no, no. I got the season pass now I would have been lost without it this year yeah, yeah. Yes. a lot of games I'm not in Croker I booked a, a trip away to Ballina slash Ennis I, I I the the Royal I or I booked I, I booked well, it actually did book it. I actually I, I booked it but I booked it like a month ago and I was yeah. thinking I obviously wasn't thinking of all Ireland quarterfinals you obviously stage. didn't think Monaghan were going to qualify no for I, the last I was confident they'd, they'd get to the last eight but I was I was actually thinking Ash they'll, they'll be on the Sunday possibly 50-50 chance I took a risk and it's uh, absolutely backfired massively so I'll be sitting in a, in a hotel room in uh, Ballina somewhere watching the match in Diego it's not the most romantic version of that actual story but it's um, Ballina is a nice trip for the three month anniversary though True, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. How did you know that? Did I say that? Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I was going to say, Will's a creep. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these stories that might yeah. be told at the wedding. follow his life. I was like, I, I kind of forgot that there. But, yeah. I'm not saying you're getting married, but at the no. wedding, they'll be like, Did you put it in a relationship up on serious, Facebook? When the ball was thrown it's in. complicated. <laughs> <laughs> the, ball, the ball was thrown in, our man, Mon. Oh, and no shame. Own. She would be my other half in Bebo, though, if Bebo still existed, I'd have to say. But what was that? Yeah. Um, Back in the day. Right, uh, let's <laughs> let's cut to the, the king of social media accounts. Let's cut, yeah. <laughs> let's cut to the chase here. The first game is as um, yeah, as the lads mentioned, the best footballer possibly ever, David Clifford, taking on a resurgent Tyrone. We'll start with you on this one, Mick. It's early to call David Clifford the best footballer ever, but uh, talent-wise, I say he's the best around at the moment. Well, he's anyway. got us all Ireland though, so. Are you saying just the, just the five goals in the uh, in the championship so far in in what's considered a quiet year from so far? Uh, better than him if he's not the best ever. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I just think that he's in his early mid early mid twenties. It's a bit early, I think, for he hasn't achieved all he will achieve yet in the game. You know, mm. frightening. Uh, it is frightening. Yeah, he's. Uh, He's a joy to watch, even on GA Go, which is a perfect. If you have it, you're you're there's nothing wrong. Unless you're a drone fan, and what do they do? See, I have to say Kerry on this, and it's gone by the early the conversations about sticking with your gut. I have all the usual fears of Tyrone, <laughs> and the lads like Shane will definitely have seen Tyrone more than I have. Mm. Um, I backed only goal last week. I think I think that's actually one of the ones that I got seriously wrong, that's and that right. was over after ten minutes. Mm. And Tyrone looked like. 
a genuine contender last week. The only problem is I just I find it just very hard to see Kerry going out of the championship this early and in this low key way. Yeah. Um, so just almost just by logic of Kerry need to be there in the latter rounds I have to go with them but I'd be worried I'd be very worried that the form of Derek Hanavan at the moment like it's just like superstar level stuff like you know and that's adding to a really really strong team that beat them a couple of years ago that won in All-Ireland it's the last two All-Ireland champions up against each other here you know I don't know well, there, um, it's a, a tough one. It is very tough. Like there, there's a bit of a mixed narrative here. Kerry don't want Tyrone. Tyrone don't want Kerry. Um, who do you will to win? Uh, right. So you the, have, you I see. What, I see. What you did there, very nice. Very nice. Completely, nice completely yeah. unintended. Off the, off the yeah. hook, yeah. Uh, will to win. That that'd be a great name for your like kind of new new podcast. podcast yeah. Anonymous. I need to write that down. Keep it in the book. Um, the oh, what about a, what about a, a segment that we uh, where people send in letters to Will and we call it Write Your Will? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and some oh, of them yeah. probably would as well, like because I mean sometimes you do need a death wish to kind of listen to. Will. I'd say Will. See, Will, Will, is, Will, Will is like um, so Will to, is like royalty in the Midlands, as we all know. He does the MC gigs, yeah. he cuts ribbons, he holds Best babies, dance hosts, all yeah. of the, all of that. So I'd say there's a lot of like elderly women in the Midlands who have po- like photos. Forget JFK, photos of Will O'Callaghan up on their wall. I'm thinking of the kind of man in. Fo- Father Ted here, um, Kiss before bed love, Ted. but um, yeah, I, I feel like they're far off. Yeah, I, I think Will has. Do you get dinner dance gigs then? No, no, you don't get any MC. He gets all the no. horse racing good gigs. I'd though. say, I'd God say. one. Will, Will pound for pound is your the tux? best radio voice. Oh yeah, in yeah. The country central. I, I, even before I knew him, I was. What are we talking? Sorry, Kerry and Tyrone, right? On my club. Johnny bringing us back to fuck. No, sorry, excuse me, to normal. <laughs> to normal. It's already in holiday mode. The snooker here. hall here. Oh, I've been at a scroll. Could this lads. game be over early? And <laughs> what have you made of Tyrone this year? Uh, Tyrone have been such a mi- mixed bag this mm. year. Like two weeks ago, mixed if I've been in the last three years, I would even say in recent weeks, mm. their performance against Westmeath was really poor in mm. the last round of the group stage when they still needed. A result uh, to make sure that they qualified on the last day I expected a lot better from them in that game and then they stepped it up and complete blitzkrieg of Donegal in Bally Buffet last week which makes you kind of think Tyrone are now a real live contender going into Crow Park from the quarterfinals in they will take a lot of inspiration from the way that they were able to shut Kerry down a couple of years ago in the semi-final and then once David Clifford went off the field they were able to seize control of the game I'm not quite sure if Tyrone are still at the level that they were going into that semi-final in that kind of weird season that was 2021 but you wouldn't be surprised if they took Kerry out at the weekend but a bit like the lads my instinct is to go for Kerry and stick with Kerry and I just think that there's another gear in Kerry compared to what we've seen so far this season I think Kerry felt their way through despite the loss against Mayo in the group stage didn't play particularly well against Cork but I expect Kerry to improve and I think Kerry will get to the All-Ireland final this year The one thing Shane is th- this season has been a bit mad and it's been really um, a challenge for the coaches to get the teams to peak at the right time mm. For that reason, I'm wary of a lot of kind of form going into. This is where it gets serious, and I think teams will be right now. But I, I don't know. What do you make of? What do you make of Tyrone's bench as well? Because that's going to be important. Yeah, the strength and depth has been something that's Tyrone have added in the last two or three years. You say a bit like the lads will. I'm going to take this oh, in a slightly yes. different direction here. Trust. Uh, so Kerry, obviously, chance to get one back. Well, they've had the extra. Yeah, exactly. I have, I've got nothing to lose. I've got a lead here, so uh, they've had the extra week's break. Everything to lose. Yeah, everything to lose. Literally yeah. everything to lose. Like, like, everything. To lose. Yeah, um, everything. Gainey's in the team. Uh, basically, a full strength Kerry team with a bit of a rest. Tyrone have the momentum. Yes, the strength and depth. Cal McShane has come in off the bench a couple of times in recent weeks. Uh, I think was it uh, Kyle Coney and Tommy in the power rankings this week said Toronto the best midfield in the country with Kennedy and Kilpatrick. Uh, the way McCurry is playing, the way Mc, the, the two Canavan lads are playing, and also I just think regardless of Toronto's form, and yes, Heslin's kick could have knocked them out of the championship, but when they see a green and gold jersey in Croke Park something just clicks with these Tyrone lads mm. I watched them as in Healy Park and Oma for their game against Monaghan in, in the Ulster Championship and like, Tyrone were what five points ahead at half time steamrolling Monaghan came back and won it in the second half but th- there's just something about this Tyrone team that I feel hasn't quite clicked yet but is just about to click and I think the All-Ireland Champions are going to be knocked out of the championship this weekend I think go for Tyrone mm. can we, can the we midfield thing is interesting yeah. because you're talking you about, have a you're talking about the anyway, best midfield and then you're talking about the All-Ireland champions without David Moore yeah. who yeah. hasn't been replaced in any yeah. way like, yeah. mm. um, let's reiterate the selection so you're going for uh, I'm, I'm opting for Tyrone you're going, going for, for Kerry 
it's very close. I am going for Kerry though. Three weeks in a row for Tyrone as well. Don't forget that. Like you know, yeah, there's a, it's a lot, lot of lot of miles in the legs now. But before yeah. we get to the next game, um, I was sort of issuing something of a call to arms to a call to arms to Cork football fans that they can never bother their arse supporting the Cork footballers. They should actually go up and support them on Sunday. How many Kerry people will turn up to the game tomorrow? 15,000? Yeah, they're, they're predicting about 65,000 all in. 15,000 from Kerry? You think so? I, I'd be surprised at that. You think it'll be less? I think it'll be less. Right. I would, There's one of his Kerry friends. Kerry going all, yeah. It's like, I'm going. tickets. <laughs> um, 15, yeah, I'd be I'd be under that now. They'll, they'll definitely be the least supported county in Croke Park tomorrow. Armagh, Monaghan and Tyrone will bring a raft of supporters. The M1 you is going to be You don't think an old rival in Tyrone would maybe rustle a few Kerry people to go? Have you ever been to Kerry, right? They are the honestly the coolest, most laid back, like kind of witty, but like know how... Know that Kerry's basically the best place in the world, and they're very nonchalant about showing up for things that just uh, sure. Sure, we go for the semi, we go for the final. They're just, they just love Kerry. They're only really not that popular going to Dublin. Also saw someone long way on. to Dublin. Yeah, it is, it is a long way. Way. In fairness, it's, it's a long money as well. It is expensive. Yeah, but saw someone posting earlier, but uh, Kerry people are the only, some of the only people in the country who mispronounce the county Tyrone. They they pronounce it like the American first name Tyrone. They all say Tyrone. Down in, down in Kerry don't know why it kind of annoys me like they also call it. Mead Meat which I think yeah. is one of the best uh, the best ones going yeah. okay the well atmosphere done. Well done. with or without Shane Hannan at 6 o'clock for two unbelievably well supported teams in our man Monaghan um, I know I know people traditionalists kind of bemoan the way football has gone I think this is going to be absolutely engrossed in regards to what happens because it'll be so physical so intense um, I will start on my left actually with the Clare man Do, I fancy to win the hurling for what it's worth um, if we can up all over the place it'll be a Clare Galway final and may the best team win on that next week anyway um, Armagh um, versus Monaghan this is going to be a humdinger in my view oh yeah it's brilliant we're just, we were just talking about it myself and Shane about how close a game this is and how like in some ways that puts more pressure on because you know if you're a Monaghan fan this is one we can win but you're in no way guarantee if anything our are slight favourites I did slight favourites yeah but that's yeah. Sad, I, I find it I find it a 50-50 call the only reason I'll go for our man the pick was I was just saying even again to Shane it's just I'm trying to stick more of my instincts this week and less of my analysis I was saying like I think our man are a point a better team now that's going against the fact that they also had a game last week and Monaghan didn't, you know, so... Mick, this is mentally right. This is going to go down to the wire. Did the win over Galway, which I, I still can't believe Galway out of the championship. Everything just went completely mad. But that game, it, they did get over the line in a close Sorry, finish. Is that going to Armand stand... Armagh week off, yeah. Mm. That is that going to stand to Armagh mentally that they we, they managed to get over the line against Galway by hooker by crook? Um, and by hooker by crook against Westmead in the first and, game as well. Exactly. And and like Monaghan, I, I totally trust Monaghan in a, in a battle. I think Monaghan will not like flake out of this but will our ma will that carry them over the line because I think it'll be close five minutes to go yeah possibly yeah that, that that could be a big one I do feel like we underestimate our ma a little bit like if you look at their record you know they lost a brilliant Ulster final to one of the real All-Ireland contenders they could say they're as good as Derry or close to it right they lost last year they were knocked out of the championship in a penalty shootout to the team who could have won the All-Ireland they were very close to doing so like this is a very very good side and they're a young side that technically you know they, they should be a year on they should be a bit better than they were last year um I don't know if they've reached those heights it doesn't feel like it but at the same time would you bank against you know two or three huge performances this week from some of their bigger names you know speaking, like speaking of, yeah speaking of which Reno Neal is back who'd be more important to the outcome that's him or exactly what I was thinking you know but I well Rafferty probably but it doesn't mean you can't have a bit of magic from O'Neill but like I suppose my concern I'd go for a man against most teams this week I just my concern is another Ulster team and an Ulster team with a lot of nous and a lot of experience and who know what they're getting in our man and that's why I, that's why I have a mad like that's why I'm 49% Monaghan but the 51 is our mass so I'm picking them sorry I don't, I don't want to be on the fence with this I'm not that's trying like to equivocate uh, I'm just explaining my thoughts smooth Jimmy's lock of the week when you're right 52% <laughs> 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 you're well, I'm right 52% of the time <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, segue I, I'm happy being right 52 I've got a feeling we're going for another split here because I'm going for our ma as well uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's our ma after extra time yeah. uh, this time around I hope for their supporters they don't have to go to penalties again uh, with the amount of penalty drama they've had over the last while but You've 
kind of fancy Ethan Rafferty to do okay if it did, but anyway. <laughs> Plenty of experience of it now. They lost, stage, lost to Galway and Derry in the last yeah. year. They did do, as well. Yeah, although, yeah, the Derry game, give them a bit of an out in that. Yeah. Um, I reckon it's going to be close. Yeah, and I, look, I think the point was made in a few of the previews this week, and I think it's a very reasonable one, which is that Armagh have not maybe converted some of their good football into silverware over the last few seasons, mm. but yet under Kieran McGuinney, they've become an established best eight in the country team when it comes to championship. And I just think the break may well have done Armagh a bit of a favour here. Like Monaghan have now come through a couple of weeks in a row. I think the teams who finish tops of the groups actually have a bit of an advantage coming into this. I'd probably be proven horrifically wrong now and all of the qualifier teams will come through and win this week. But I fancy Armagh, but I only fancy Armagh by a score and it could very well go to extra time this round. Before we, before, yeah, before we get your um, synopsis on it, like the... It has been like criticised, but it actually the, the leagues, the group stages worked out quite dramatic in mm. the end, and you did really want to win your group. Like, so is it a negative or a positive to come in here after a week or two? Yeah, it's hard. It's it's momentum versus rest. And if you told me that after the first game against Westmead, was it against Westmead they played the first game? Yeah. If you told me after that that Armagh would top that group, I, I'd have told you not a hope with going thrown in it, just the way Armagh were playing. Um. So yeah, the fact that they came through that group, I, you probably do want the rest. But having said that, a lot of players just want to play week on week and training this week for Monaghan would have been simple just recover and recuperate um, it's the diesel derby it's the green diesel derby <laughs> this game um, were you disappointed with Monaghan last week? Um, could have easily went out you know, performance wise yes they're a team that I don't think are at top level they're not at all yeah. Ireland winning level whereas you're, we're just making that case about Armagh here yeah but I suppose Monaghan had to travel down to Tullamore Kildare took them there and, and they had the I guess the feel good factor after the Russ Common game as well Kildare are always dangerous with that attacking talent they have I, I think for with Armagh McGinney needs he needs to take this team to the next level like he hasn't won an Ulster title with them they haven't got to an All-Ireland semi-final like this Monaghan team have experienced getting to an All-Ireland semi-final in 2018 like, they know how to get over the line if it gets down to the wire in the last 5-10 minutes where it is squeaky bum time and it's tight I always trust Monaghan to rise to that battle because they always seem to win games when not to bury up Shaman there's a doggedness about this Monaghan team oh, yeah, big time yeah, very light big time. team I think they've one of the best halfback lines I know I'm biased but I think they've one of the best halfback lines in the country Carl O'Connell uh, who's reeling in the years this season he's a, he's a guaranteed all-star especially if Monaghan win at the weekend and Conor McCarthy who could be an all-star himself to be honest he scored uh, a couple of goals in the championship from halfback already um, like McManus on the bench like he, he was anonymous when he came on against Kildare but the thing is he is come on against, be the, it's kind of made for him though to come off the bench and maybe get like he loves the big day like yeah. like Croke Park he revels in Croke Park um, and I just think Vinnie Corey he would like the fact that Monon have things to improve on Rory Baggins said after the game last weekend Monon haven't performed for 75 minutes 70-75 minutes in any game in this championship they, they performed in periods in a draw against Derry in a win against uh, Tyrone and Oma beating Clare uh, so they've got big results having not performed if Monon can perform for 70 minutes I really think they're going to win this game um, you might say that's a big if but like the kicking of Began in Croke Park I saw him one day against Dublin in the league game kicking from literally 70 metres over the bar in, in a canter yeah, li- literally you sailed over mm. um, I, I just think obviously hope as well that there's a doggedness about this Monaghan team and I think getting to a semi-final is so necessary uh, for Vinnie Corey and the team and uh, like I think back to the last day of the league like Monaghan were, or Monaghan were guaranteed relegation basically and Armagh were staying up Armagh lose to Tyrone Monaghan beat Mayo and Monaghan essentially relegate Armagh to Division 2 for next year uh, so there's a little bit of bad blood the geographical proximity as well I was born in Armagh Controversial. Uh, in or in Yuri, the Armagh side in Yuri. Oh, yeah. um, but no, I'm going for I'm going for Monaghan. Will your relationship be still extant after she sees you in a championship game watching on your phone? Yeah, I'll, I'll, watch, I'll watch it on the laptop and sit it in the hotel. Will she and have and converse with her without making eye contact? But what county is your better half from? She's Monaghan as well. Oh wow, okay. So, so she's invested at least. Yeah, she's invested. Um, I will, you know, I. In, in more than just in me. more than just me also in our county in our town this is not way, over, uh, way over the line yeah. no I yeah. think look I, I think <laughs> it's a shambles of a show it is I mean, a shambles we do have two games GA long yeah. picks GA yeah, long <laughs> picks <laughs> quick pick nothing quick about Slow this Monaghan write your wheel I like when Johnny's in house self referential the show comes well oh we're way over time oh this isn't good yeah okay. that out. You're, you're going for your I'm going for my home county yeah. right. so we've both gone against Shane for both of the okay. Saturday games okay. interesting uh, I mean could be unassailable this time could be or else back level yeah so just to reiterate the score 
scores are Shane 17, Will 15, Mick 14. So it is sort of on the proverbial knife edge, which I expect will be the case as well come Sunday. And say what you like about the championship, lads. But, like, this is just phenomenal stuff. Um, Derry v Cork is going to be very much the undercard of the whole weekend. But, like, you'll be writing off Derry at your pearl, I think. And Cork, I don't know, Cork for me, Mick, have been one of the real heartwarming stories of recent championships, not to mind this one talked about it last week about how you know how well they performed against Kerry it kind of went under the radar and then obviously the results since have shown that that was a real thing and their comeback from like they were shambles against Clare like for, look don't get me wrong I remember listening to that match of the radio I was delighted and Clare deserved credit for it as well but mm. Cork obviously weren't at the races but do you know what I, th- I was impressed with with like Obviously, the the coaching staff has a couple of big names, but obviously we'll give the credit to to John Cleary. But like how they adapted last week, like Ross Common were killing that game. Like I was texting a couple of people saying, "Is Gaelic football just a shit sport?" Do you know what I mean? Like it was at watch, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, it was the first game of the weekend, and you're kind of dra- dragged down the conversation. It's like I can't watch unless it. you can't support one of those teams. Yeah, Ross Common, yeah. just go. I wouldn't have. I, I couldn't have. You could, I can't watch Ross Common on, like. just sauntering around. There's no skill involved in it. Even they're just popping the ball side to side waiting for something to happen mm. and Cork adapted and they pressed them and the last 10-15 minutes of the first half was as good a tactical adaptation as I've seen this year and they won the game right there like I know the second half was more open it was played a little bit more on Cork's terms Just common are as good as Cork that's why they stayed in it that's why it was close until the end but it was played on their terms and I was very impressed with that look Derry are a step too far for them I think we'll all probably agree with that wouldn't we like I, I think Derry are genuine all Ireland contenders and I don't think Cork are at yep. this at this level so you have to pick Derry um, and you have the Kevin Walsh imprint as well it's it's, it's kind of it's not ironic because in Lannis more said ironic that Galway are out the championship and Kevin Walsh is going to Crow Park this weekend yeah I mean look he's had an impression on the way that they defend particularly I think back to this time last year when both Derry and Cork played on the Saturday in the quarterfinals mm-hmm. Cork were horrific against Dublin in the second game of that double header and Derry went through Clare for sport on the day and I genuinely came away from the game thinking Derry are all Ireland contenders after the way that they ran through them that day now they came I think they didn't perform against Galway to be fair to no, they yeah. had a bit of an off day they came unstuck obviously in the semi-final in the end but I just think Derry again have been at a consistent level throughout the season and I will hold my hands up and say when the draw came out for the group stages I thought Cork were in real trouble allowed to give them the problems in the league earlier in the year I thought Cork were going to struggle to get over them and I particularly thought then are they going to be able to get a result after the Kerry game to qualify they've now taken two Division 1 teams in a row in recent weeks so they have shown that their level is a lot better than where they were last year but at the same time I think Derry are the better team in this I think if they'd met last year Derry would have hammered them I think this time around Cork would be a lot more competitive and more difficult to beat I think mean, they've got more energy in the way that they press the ball as well and yeah. they were rewarded for that against Roscommon you know, Roscommon tried to keep the ball towards the end of the game and Cork were happy enough to go up and force mistakes and that probably spoke a bit about the mentality about the Cork team this year compared to last year so I think Cork are a bit closer to Derry but I, I doubt we'll see what Shane says in a second any of us are going to go against Derry this weekend Casanova yeah I think like <laughs> <laughs> first time I've been called that um, Cork have been probably I, I hope you'll be called it by herself now tomorrow. possibly yeah, 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 yeah. anyway okay Shane we, we, we are running out of time here Cork have been, <laughs> Cork have been I've just started Cork have been uh, the story of the championship so far um, I think actually Cork have a better bench than Derry okay. uh, so that's an argument in favour of them but having said that Derry's starting 15 is so strong the support and John Cleary said it with us during the week like the sport like can be that small factor coming down the stretch mm-hmm. and Derry will have that factor in their oh, favour yeah. massively so um, like I said Kennedy and Kilpatrick the lads have been saying how they're the best midfield in the country I actually think Derry's midfield like Conrad Lass and Brendan Rogers mm-hmm. is probably yeah. the best midfield in the country um, and Shane McGuigan if he's on form on Sunday I just don't see how Cork can deal with him Brian Hurley is named on the bench in the 26. Now, they have up, up, up until, I think, 40 minutes before throw-in to, to change that starting 15, and there's a chance, if Hurley is fit, he throws him in from the start, but at the very least, he'll have some impact on the match. Sherlock starts, Kevin O'Donovan, who came off the bench to score that injury-time winner against Roscommon last week, does start as well. Um, so what Cork have done has, been so, has done has been so impressive, I just think Derry... They definitely are all all Ireland contenders, and like no one will want to meet them in the semi-finals yeah. when they, I think, do get there. So yeah, I think for me, it's the ultimate. Is there champions. any word on which colours the teams are wearing tomorrow? I think because Derry uh, seems to perform better in red, and they love wearing red now. I think Derry are wearing white. And they're old. They're old kids. No, well, Derry would Derry would be the. They'd have the option because they're the. 
they're the home not the home team but the, the ones who got straight through Derry should wear their home kit and Cork wear all white it's the only one that is if Derry have too much red in their Actually, white no, kit no anyway. I think it's Derry and red and Cork and white Interesting. Colin Bibbick will tell us outside, but uh, I'm fairly sure that's what it is. Yeah, I stand la- corrected. The last Cork's last All Ireland won in all white. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Against yeah. Down, yeah. Yeah, the, la- the last few minutes were basically like three or four lads in the pub. Why did Derry like change their colours? Yeah. Who's wearing what colours? I would say last time. It annoys me. Because they used to always wear it against Throne, and that was it. Mm, then yeah. they'd, wear the, they'd wear the white. It looks more intimidating. Is there a psychology I think the it? white with the red hoop was a class. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Class. Yeah. They love Even the fans all, all still wear that jersey. Like. <laughs> the retro. Yeah. 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 If, you're, if you're still listening to this erudite conversation, and uh, nail your colours to the mass. My lock, Jim, Smooth Jimmy's lock of the week is Mayo to beat Dublin. Um, Jimmy in this instance being me go on Jimmy why <laughs> Casanova uh, who do I why do I like I can't have Dublin at all I really don't think that. I think f- defensively they're nowhere near the team they were and it's, it's just Mayo that that victory in Salt Hill is massive like and I know Galway sort of so much went wrong but they beat Galway in Salt Hill more comfortably than the point margin would suggest they're coming to the boil the last time they were in Crow Park they won Mick why are you starting with me all the time? I want to hear the reasons from the lads. I started okay, okay. all. Actually, that's fair. Reverse that's it over fair. to Shane. We we'll go with. Uh, we we'll go with Shane this time. Yeah. <laughs> Fine, Fine. Your, your brain juices. Um, it feels it feels wrong to predict against Mayo ever in Croke Park once it gets to this this stage. But um, I, I, so much did go wrong in, in Salt Hill. I know it was probably one of those types of games. The kick out retention was horrendous. So bad. Like, I know there, so look, bad. there's the wind factor in Salt Hill as well. I get that. But Colin Reap was probably put under pressure a little bit. If the game goes into chaos, Mayo will obviously thrive. But I don't think Dublin ever really let a game get into chaos. We've seen some great games between the two over the years where it maybe has developed into that a little bit. But Bugler, Costello, Khan, Jack McCaffrey returned against Sligo off the bench. He's named and to start. Yeah, he's in line to start. He's in name to start. I, yeah, he's named to start, he, but I don't know if I believe either of the two teams, particularly yeah. reports in the papers earlier to that Mayo put in the register team incredibly early as well. Yeah, so. that's the thing. And Mayo's team that's named, probably no real surprises in it. Patrick Ahora is back in, mm-hmm. a cornerback. Um, How big is Aidan O'Shea here? I actually thought he played very well on Sunday. Yeah, I thought he was, he was good. pivotal at times. Maybe slightly surprising he was taken off. Well, what, 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 uh, what role is he going to have here? Huge. Huge and, and how Dublin marshal him is going to be massive. I actually think Kelly O'Connor is going to be a bigger one. Uh, like yeah. similar to Brian Hurley, it, it, like if with Cork, you know, you either st- he's not named to start Kelly, I don't, I don't think. But um, if he is fit and can can, can significantly add to the game, Kelly wouldn't have wouldn't have a starting like no energy. Wouldn't have a birth. Were you in Salt Hill last week? No, I, oh, I couldn't go well, with with work. We watched the telly, but like the, the wind, like honestly, like at half time, and I'm not. No, I'm, but, but I do have a betting background. Fair enough. But like the the Mayo were four to one with one bookmaker at half time and I was like that is one of the most ridiculous prices ever. yeah with the wind second you half you literally couldn't if you kicked the ball straight it went it veered to the left or it veered to the right it was a Salt Hill is a horrible place to play football when yeah. the wind is bad it's right by the sea they should be played in tune I've said that a million times and Galway at five points it was nowhere near enough no the reason I asked you the question though was because Killian O'Connor coming on seemed to give Mayo mm. and the fans and, and the stadium I'd, I'd yeah. love to have been there to experience okay. it to see was it real because on the telly the it felt like a real lift and then he kicked the score and it was the most yeah. classic Killian O'Connor point yeah. that Believe you'll well. see and it was brilliant and it was a, and you know what he did not that much for the rest of the game now he, he was involved he was winning scrappy ball and stuff like that but I don't yeah. think he had another clear I don't think he had another clear possession did he oh, the in the rest of the match but you know what I the game was won in that moment for yeah. me yeah. When, yeah. Mayo, when he kicked that score and that's why I'd leave him on the bench I wouldn't be I wouldn't be trying to get Killian O'Connor Connor too involved he could get stifled he could get some like he could be like the last 20 minutes whereas yeah. if you give them that lift and the game's still on 15 even 25 minutes to go you it's bring on Killian O'Connor that's going to lift every single player on that pitch for me. it's interesting yeah. Kevin McSay seems to want to get something slightly different out of Killian O'Connor rather than just being a guy to come off the bench and kick a few scores he said he sent him back to play club football for footballing reasons as opposed yeah. to injury reasons so I'm wondering if he's telling him that he wants the role to change a little bit rather than being that impact sub I got the impression what he was saying reasons. was it was reasons I know what you're saying that was football reasons rather but it was to get more football yeah. as in like he play 60 minutes a club game or he'll play five minutes and he kicked two six as well know. in that club game like, yeah. and I think it was 60 versus 5 was he actually mm-hmm. referenced that so I think that was more get a game under your belt and to be honest I wish more club managers were doing that yeah. because oh, absolutely or yeah. county absolutely. manager absolutely. sorry yeah absolutely. certainly didn't hurt down last week well, well, we've, we've been talking about it absolutely. like it's I couldn't agree more will the prospect potential of John Small being on Aidan O'Shea like when you think <laughs> of these epic battles Keep of physicality battle, right? and so on and so forth um 
uh, probably the game I'm looking forward to most of the four. Yeah, and look, I take the point that some of the Dublin camp. Did you pick? I'm going to Dubs. It'll be it'll be a narrow game. It has to, it has to be a narrow game. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, be, yeah. Dublin for me. Mm. Mm. Some of the narrative coming out of Dublin camp, I think, is reasonable that they could feel a bit undercooked. They played one Division One team all year with the way that things have fallen. How does that, that keep happening? Good. They've changed yeah. the entire system so that Dublin and Kerry yeah. couldn't saunter through, <laughs> and Dublin <laughs> still played nobody. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely mad. Yeah. yeah. So we don't know anything about them. Yeah. We don't know. We, we the only don't. time they played a top team, they struggled and they drew. Yeah. But they were so dominant in every other game. You're thinking they must be good. But their level, yeah. their level will rise, won't it? They were poor against Kildare as well. Uh, oh, they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. The they first, blew leash yeah. and loud out of the water and then qualified out. Of the I, I, I honestly don't know what to make of Dublin. I, 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 I still have reservations. They don't convince me. What's your call on this? Because we're way over time at this stage. <laughs> my, at the time you listen to this, you have to cancel over. half the show. My right call now. is Johnny. If Mayo win, I can feel the performance rankings with Shane and who's with you on Monday, Shane? Oh, Johnny, maybe Johnny. Johnny. Yeah, two yeah, yeah. of you back here for the performance rankings, and I guarantee. The argument would be that Mayo losing that game and having the six week break was the making of their summer. Roscommon and Galway are watching on TV while Mayo are playing against Dublin, yeah. and that hard side of the Connacht draw, they were better off just to avoid it and to have the break. I am edging towards. Was it on last no, week? No, I'm as well? saying it should have been yeah, because yeah. the other two are out. You, <laughs> made, you missed the trick, lads. Um, I think Mayo are going to win. Oh. I'm with Mayo as well. I don't count in the purposes of this vote, but Mick. Oh, it's good to have Yeah, but it means that I've got a. Uh, yeah. God, lads, I don't know. I uh, may have beaten Dublin the last two times, haven't they? Semi-final. Championship. They beat them in the COVID game. Um, that was oh, no, sorry, they didn't. Sure, they lost One, the 20 semi final. Yeah, final. yeah okay. <sighs> I don't know. I can't. I. I this is the hardest. What, game. what worries me about Dublin. And it's in some ways it's the same with Mayo. It's like it's the old dogs that are still key to everything, aren't they? Like you know I, what I, I mean. Agree. And it's I like agree, yeah. you know, at some some day that's not going to be there anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to be there for Rock or for uh, James McCarthy. Like James McCarthy is probably still Dublin's most important player. You know, mm-hmm. Fenton's been there so long. Like, but I th- I I think they have another kick in them, lads. I do. I I. I Dublin yeah and I'm sorry but also Mayo's scoring this year has been poor uh, Armaz has been very poor as well as Mayo's yeah. in championship yeah. but Mayo just can't they're not racking up enough points I think obviously they'll score more in Cook I, Park I, I thought they were very good in the league final now I thought that they was were. a very polished performance and they knew how to what to do with Aidan O'Shea ever yeah. since if, yeah. they, if they play as laterally as they did against Louth you'd worry straight away yeah mm. I, I, this has been the longest quick Quick picks. Uh, no picks. This shows ever. how good the weekend is. Lengthy, it's, it's lengthy. I, I go for Dublin now. I'll be quick pick and I'll okay. go for Dublin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's let's reiterate very very quickly your four selections from from each of you, if you can remember me. Uh, so I'm going for Armagh, Kerry, Derry, oh, wrong order, Derry and Dublin. Well, I'm the same except for I've gone for Mayo over Dublin. Tyrone, Monaghan, Derry, Dublin. It wasn't quick, but we're done. <laughs>